I'm John Foster. Join me for a behind the scenes look at Ventura County Archaeology. Today's presentation is in two parts and features Julie Tumamaya of Stensley, Tribal Chair of the Barbarania Venturania Chumash, discussing processing of acorns using traditional tools and methods. Find out why squirrels played an important role in the indigenous environment. Hello, Julie Tumamite Stensley is my name. I grew up in the Ojai Valley and I'm here today to talk about this magnificent tree, the oak, the oak tree, cool, or coast live oak. I don't distinguish my oaks, they're all precious to me and they all have value. And in today's world where uh, we dismiss a lot of our native plants, we're here to teach you all the valuable things that can happen with the oak and its byproduct, the acorn. So I've been passionate about them forever, but when I started looking into the ethnobotany of the Chumash people, which I am a descendant of, and grew up here, I've really made a close connection with these trees. And as we all should, is that they are our protectors. They are our, in many ways, uh, a dramatic beauty in our landscape. They are the keystone species of our communities here. And going back the thousands of years that we've had this relationship with these beautiful rooted people, that I want to share some of the things that I have learned. And it's not everything by all means, but it's one that I'm growing up with and learning to have this relationship with and this communication with. So I'm happy to share with you today. What I'm going to do before even approaching the things that I'm going to be sharing with you, I want to acknowledge our rooted people in a way of offering. So in this basket here, I have rose petals, I have toyon berries, I have uh, artemisia, I have even some of the grounded acorn flour that I processed and giving it back, giving it back to the to this beautiful rooted person and thanking and some bear root, some OSHA root and so I'm just and tobacco. But I just want to say thank you, Goya, Goya, to this beautiful ancient one and to say thank you for all its life, long life. I wish it long life and all of its relatives and can long life because as we are losing many of our oak trees, the four, five, six, seven hundred year old trees, we rarely in this valley or even around here that I know have our trees that old in this world anymore. So they are precious. Um, to look at them as our breathing buddies, that they are going to clean our atmosphere of the CO2 that we're facing right now, that we should be planting these all throughout our open spaces and and letting them do the work that they're meant to do, as well as many other things. We recognize this beautiful tree as a relative, as a child of the moon. And when we look at the oak tree in our, in our ancient culture, again, in cultures all around the world, there are many significance in our stories, in our, what the oak has given to many people, indigenous peoples around the world. So I'm going to just continue pounding and once I get to a place where I've done all that I'm going to move on to where now we have this beautiful flower I'm going to transfer it over here so you can see what it looks like and it's beautiful it's white now this has already been leached once it's in this stage and it's not leached you would put it in a basket mm. I don't have that size basket and I'm not a basket weaver. So one of these days I'll find one. But as we take that flower, put it in the large basket, say this is my basket with my acorn flower. You could either use, if the water's not deep enough, you use a water bottle that is made out of juncus, a woven water bottle that has been lined with the asphaltum. And that water, uh, it seals, uh, waterproofs the basket. You could pour water through the basket and as it leaches, you know, the acorn flower, that water's going to be put back into the ground. Or if the water's deep enough in your river or creek, you can place the basket directly in the stream and let the water run through. But today I use my kitchen sink. I use a, a glass bowl. Don't use plastic. Don't use plastic to store your acorns because of that water. Use paper or use what all everything you've gathered. Uh, you want to use paper or glass because they sweat 
if you put them in plastic and you'll ruin your flour that you just spent all that time. So in my kitchen, I have my sink here, my glass bowl, my acorn flour, and I'm using the running water. When I pour the first batch of acorn flour into my bowl, the water looks like this. It's really dark. Now this, in this jar here, is the bark. Now, because there's so many uses, I, I don't want to dismiss the qualities of all the qualities that the oak and acorn in this tree does for us. This tannin, and when people say, is that poisonous? Actually, the children were encouraged to chew on oak bark. It strengthened the gums and the teeth. When you ate fish from the ocean or possibly even freshwater fish, you, your body gets parasites in one way or another. Drinking a light tea of oak bark, well, it's an astringent, so it'll dry up those parasites and rid your body of them. So it's actually very beneficial for you. This, although this uh, oak bark that's been sitting in this jar for probably about 10 years now, is what you tan your hides with. You would have uh, a vessel, a, a wooden bowl, or some kind of, uh, or even maybe a, a basket that would hold water, and you put your hides in it. That's why they call it tanning hides. Makes sense? And um, small hides, there's other plants that could be used. Soap root is one way of tanning hides, but this is very beneficial. I'm gonna share a story with you that comes back from, comes out of ancient Egypt. When they would extract the oil from the acorns and use it as massage oil to rid the body of inflammation. So it's an antioxidant. When our bodies are full of, of, of all those oxides, so that's one benefit. It's gluten-free, the flour is gluten-free, that's another that's another benefit to eating acorn flour. You can use it and substitute it for any flour. And where you can buy this already, you're paying $25, $35 for a pound of already leached and ready acorn. The Koreans have what they call an acorn starch. They use it for um, different foods. But this is so much more fun. It really connects you. All right, so I'm in my kitchen. And I've got the modern conveniences today. That's why I distinguish from the oaks. In the olden days, the, um, I think it was the live coast oak, or no, no, uh, sorry, the valley oak. That was more preferred because it had less tannin in them. But today, because of the size of these and the accessibility to modern conveniences, I love the bigger acorns. And as you're noticing, not only are we eating them and, and processing them, we're wearing them. The, the other, there's a distinction between the necklace that I made here. The women, and it made much sense back then because we didn't have Dremels today, <laughs> then, we have them today, that the thinner part, less surface area was drilled so they'd be turned and strung up here with their little rounded bottoms mm -hmm. hanging down. But I, I, like, I like the way the little points come down. So we wore, wore them as ornamentation also. When the women are uh, cutting their bangs, now my bangs are long, but I would take an oak branch. Let's see if I can find a little oak branch. Set it on fire using oak wood. That was our fire. Uh, burned really long and hard. So I put this on fire, blow it out. It's glowing red. I take my bangs, I twist them, and I singe right a little long. I'd singe it mm, probably about right here because we always love to wear our bangs. And then you have that burnt hair smell. You take an acorn meat, grind it up into a paste, rub it on your hair and into your scalp. It conditioned the scalp and took away that burnt smell.